in linear algebra, there's a such thing as a matrix, we can call it R theta, that will rotate if you take a point x, y, it will rotate x, y theta degrees around the origin. So if we get ourselves a graph, let's say we had our point right here, and we had theta equals 30 degrees, it would rotate us 30 degrees and our point would end up here. That is what the rotation matrix does. The question is, what is this matrix? And why is it that? So I'm going to start by giving you the rotation matrix. And then I'm going to try to give you a good understanding of why it is so. So the rotation matrix, r theta, is the cosine of theta and the sine of theta as the first column, and then the negative sine of theta and the cosine of theta as the second column. Why is this? Well, we have to look at this matrix like a transformation. As we know, the first column represents the uh, unit vector i hat, which before transformation points straight out and to the right. And this gray unit vector here uh, sorry, not gray. This second unit vector here, this represents j hat. It usually points straight up here before transformation. Okay, so we have to ask the question, what do these uh, new points that, we're t that r theta is telling i hat and j hat to go to, what do these represent? Well, first and foremost, we have i hat, cosine and sine. This pair of points, cosine sine, describes where on a unit circle going theta degrees would take you. So let's get ourselves a graph of a nice big unit circle to the best of my drawing abilities, hopefully. I'm not perfect at these things, but we'll try. You know, that's not half bad, actually. That's really good. All right, so, and I'll copy this, actually, just in case we might ever need it again. I'll just set it off to the side. Okay, so um, this first point I had, this is representing where a theta degree rotation will take you. So let's just draw out a line here. This will be I hat, and this is after rotating theta degrees. Now, negative sine of theta, cosine of theta. This doesn't really make sense initially. But I want it to make sense. And to ma explain it, I want to explain something about the axes. So in a rotation, the axes remain perpendicular. What does that mean? It means that just like they start, there's a 90 degree angle between the axes. This seems like a given. But let's say you had a sheet of paper, and you had your axes on it, so like some graph paper, some scratch paper, and you rotated it. So now you have a rotated sheet of paper with your axes. This may well represent your rotation, right? From the original, if I draw the original here in this yellowish color, from the original, it seems that you've rotated some number of degrees, right? And you can see here, though, the axes always remain perpendicular. So the number of degrees that the first one rotates here, which we can call red, and I had, that's not red, that is orange. We can call this red and i hat, that's theta degrees. And what does j hat in green rotate? j hat, perpendicular to i hat, rotates theta plus 90 degrees. Theta plus 90 degrees, that's j hat. So axes are perpendicular. Axes are perpendicular. This implies that j rotates by theta plus 90 right? And i, i hat, rotates by theta. So we have theta and then theta plus 90 to remain perpendicular. So if we draw it up on our unit circle here, we'll have the 90 degree rotation here to get j. And we can write this in as a right angle. So why does j hat go to negative sine theta, cosine theta? 
Well, it's because the 90 degree rotation from cosine is negative sine, and the 90 degree rotation from sine theta is cosine theta. So if we write it down, another way I could write down r theta, I could rewrite r theta as r theta equals, again, cosine of theta, sine of theta. I could say negative sine of theta is the cosine of theta plus 90. And I could say that the cosine of theta is the sine of theta plus 90. We usually use these trigonometric identities to shorten the rotation matrix, to make it uh, look symmetric and clean. But in reality, this is what it's saying. It's saying, rotate the first knob, the first axis, rotate it theta degrees. Rotate the next axis theta plus 90 degrees to maintain perpendicularity. So that is how I always remember the axes of the rotation matrix. I don't try to remember the cosine sine negative sine cosine. I try to remember the cosine sine, which is the pair you have to remember for trigonometry. It's the unit circle x, y positions. And then just adding 90 degrees. And then if you want to get fancy, you can apply the trigonometric identity that goes along to transform cosine of theta plus 90 to negative sine theta and sine of theta plus 90 into cosine of theta.